Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing the Tale of Two Koreas. Last episode was a bit of a banger. We did have two kind of big wars, um, or we had like several big substantive wars. We fought with the USA, we fought uh, Ecuador. We were struggle busting our way through that because we're because mm, we were a silly willy. Um, we also uh, subjugated Persia, and very significantly, we kind of hit the 200 construction mark, uh, as well as starting to go up on uh, the university count in here in uh, our first EOS here. I think we're going to, you know, fully EOS it uh, up to 31, which is our current economies of scale cap. And this is uh, kind of the play pattern uh, where you kind of start to play a little bit of catch up, uh, you know, on tech when you are starting to get there or you're starting to push the tech at a decent clip. And we are really hoping hoping to, um, you know, now with this really strong foundation that we have for ourselves, around 50 uh, million GDP, uh, if we take a look here, we are the fifth global GDP. We are hoping to kind of pop off uh, a little bit this episode. In particular, uh, we are hoping to uh, set ourselves up, if we don't leave uh, the UK's market this episode, set ourselves up to leave the UK's market uh, either next episode, uh, if not this one. And so uh, that's kind of what we'll be doing. Um, eventually we do want to fight Qing, but Qing's a little bit scary. They actually deleted a lot of their battalions, uh, but uh, they have way more army power projection than us. So, uh, in addition to those units, I think what we're going to also put in is we have this pushing stack that we have for dedicated for pushing. I think we're going to add, um, you know, uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 20 and 20 uh, in terms of infantry and uh, uh, what is it? Uh, artillery. And so now we will have kind of a much bigger uh, pushing stack and then several of these like defensive stacks uh, on the infantry, which we do have color coded. Uh, but in terms of military, uh, this is kind of where we're moving. We have the color coded armies, the landing armies, the, uh, you know, home defense army, and now uh, coming up quite a big pushing army. So Turning a lot of corners uh, here, kind of at this 200 construction mark, I think is a, a, a good place to start turning some of these corners, and we'll be doing that. So we unlock joint stock companies, which is going to be really good for us, because we have been holding off putting in one of the very strongest techs, or one of the very strongest, not techs, companies uh, in the Kaiping Mining Company. The throughput is really, really valuable if you don't have a lot of, uh, you know, levels on something, or if you don't have economies of scale throughput, uh, which you don't have that on any sort of railway. And so it'll just basically amount to 70%, uh, 17%, you know, more throughput on the building. Uh, whereas, you know, if you already have a 50% throughput, the extra throughput's not as valuable. In addition, we'll be getting construction speed and throughput on uh, this here, uh, being the coal mines. And so now we might even want to have a little bit of a think and... Uh, slot out this company, the generic coal and sulfur company, uh, for something maybe like the gold company uh, would be a reasonable one, as would some sort of the gold company would be reasonable, especially as we're going to be annexing pretty soon here, um, a free stat or the United, o the Orange River Sovereignty. Um, we are going to be annexing these guys relatively quickly. Interesting how these guys get their own kind of names when they have the Korean um, kind of nameplates. Also, we can go for uh, Korean Steel Corporation, and I kind of like the idea of the Korean Steel Corporation. The the metalworks here would also be decent, but the reason for generic steel being so good is this 5% state construction efficiency. I think this is going to be really good for us because we have a ton of peasants right now, and so I think we would prefer this, and also we are maybe going to be kind of in the near-ish future moving towards steel frame buildings. Uh, and so being able to construct the steel a little bit faster is gonna be good. We also have considerations for getting out of um, the UK's market. So we're gonna start doing some stuff in, to adjust to that in addition to us building a lot more convoys than we need, which we've already kind of started to do. But I think we're going to de-slot the company uh, that is giving us coal, the generic coal and sulfur, because this is for us, uh, it's not going to give us as much throughput on the coal uh, as it would if it was our first company and the, overall we don't need that much sulfur so we're going to disband this one and instead we are going to slot in generic steel. Generic wood would be a decent shout too um, but I think we're going to go with generic steel for the prosperity bonus which is going to give us a state construction efficiency. We're also going to take a little bit of look at uh, trying to make places that have reasonable sorts of mappy considerations 
for our upcoming leaving of the market. So we see that we have sulfur here in Guanbuk. Uh, so we're gonna put a little bit in, even though we just slotted out the company. And what we're going to do is we're also going to put in on fertilizer. We're gonna put the fertilizer on auto expand, the sulfur on auto expand, the paper on auto expand, because all of these kind of pair well together. And of course, uh, we are gonna introduce explosives factories, which we do not have a lot of. Uh, we haven't really been pushing these. Part of the reasons why they are not getting pushed up is because the auto queue is thinking of us using the worst PM, because this is gonna be our first one and we're pulling most of it from the British market. But the mapping on this is going to be really good. But in addition to that, uh, we are going to look to add a little bit of rice farms. Uh, the rice farms, very importantly, are not going to significantly decrease the amount of labor available here. Um, uh, they're not going to cause unemployment uh, because they have an employment. They employ up to 10k pops or 9k when you're on harvesting tools. Uh, and they are overriding a rice subsistence rice paddy, which fires 10k workers so we really don't want to build the other agrarian stuff these are also going to be on a per construction basis really efficient i think a lot of our grain is actually coming from the eic right now and so we are going to do that in the few places we have uh, that have sulfur as an example of, of what we're going to be doing so we're just going to be putting in we already have the fertilizer here we're going to put it in on auto expand we're going to put the explosives factory Ooh, do we just not okay we're going to put this on auto expand and then we are going to add uh five or so rice farms here and i think that we do not have access to the rice farms over here so we kind of don't want to build over here because we already have unemployment problems in uh, in these uh but what we can do is uh we can build at least over here some explosives factories as well which are going to be quite good we'll build the explosives factories uh which will feed into some of these mines there's a lot of goods we don't have a lot of and we are going to be doing these types of things with other ones like we do not have a lot of textile mills we do not have a lot of furniture manufacturing so we're going to be kind of starting to slot some of these guys in. Um, we, of course, do not have a lot of boom booms. We don't have very much steel. Uh, we will put a few of these on auto expand. I think we'll put uh, Transvaal, Beijing, and also one down in Shangzi on auto expand, especially now that we have access to the company. They will be constructed a little bit faster, and we are going to be needing this coming up. Uh, just kind of taking a look in and looking at the numbers in addition to steel. The engines are probably okay. The shipyard is probably okay. The other one's probably decent. Uh, if we cruise through here, we're pr almost certainly going to want more grain, which is good because we're slotting in a little bit more. We might even want to put down an auto expand on this one down here. I think we'll do that. But we have a ton of coal and iron. So we're going to have to probably export this uh, relative to other stuff. And then we don't have very much fabric or dyes, but we can import it. And also we don't have a lot of textiles. And so I think that overall we look pretty decent. Just understanding that we're going to have to export a lot of mines and logging camps. So we will want to get this convoy's number up higher if we do want to leave the market. So here we were minding our own business, you know, annexing Kutai as one does. Uh, and we have a little bit of a situation here. And that situation is that Great Ching has sided against us, which changes things quite a bit. Now we have one uber fat stack that we're working on bringing up bigger, but we're gonna put these guys here. Um, and we're gonna be on defense for Ching, uh, at least at the outset here. But this is exciting because we do get to release uh, Manchuria here, or we will, uh, and then we will raise these guys. I don't know uh, how we're going to kind of adjust on the conscripts, but what we're going to do is we're going to put several defensive stacks near the capital. They are going to try and push Beijing more so than the defensive stacks. And we're probably going to ask to ask Mummy for help, because I don't think we win this solo bolo. Uh, we do have a bigger navy than theirs, so we can, you know, kind of do a lot of shenanigans, especially because landing Manchuria is in the cards. But why don't we uh, take a look at what we could sway, who we could sway, for what reasons. Transfer states, not going to do that. Transfer states, not going to do that. Uh, transfer states and obligations, not going to do that. But we do see... Uh, or we have checked, at least, that these guys can be swayed with an obligation. Interestingly, we could sway them with transfer of Beijing. Uh, normally, this doesn't happen where you can uh, kind of sway the guy after they've joined against you, which I suppose is kind of nice. But we're going to try and sway Great Britain with an obligation. Now, the problem is... Um, we really don't want them to back down. However, since uh, we are trying to annex Kutai, it's very unlikely they back down. So we're getting plus 50 would be annexed if they back down. So this means we could put war goals in on Great Xing, and it almost certainly goes through. So we're going to call it... Oh, we had an obligation. We're going to call in the obligation. Um, I think that they're less likely to help us if we call in an obligation, but that's fine. But we do want to make sure we have one war goal in on Great Xing. Uh, and so we're going to put Liberate, and we're going to put Liberate Manchuria. 
Uh, unfortunately, Shen Jiang is not part of this. Uh, I think that we maybe could lib Shen Jiang. I'm not sure if anyone actually does include that, uh, which is kind of what we would want to do. Hebei is also a decent state, so we could do that, but I think we're gonna go for Manchuria here. So now they can't leave the play. So now we're free to unpause and see what we are working with. They're of course damaging relations, it's the big sad. Uh, and here, just evaluating like how we're gonna try and fight this war, we're probably gonna try and do a lot of interesting landings. Um, Great Britain sides with us. It's really gonna depend, how we are gonna do stuff is really gonna depend on uh, how uh, much Great Britain helps us. Uh, I suppose we could try and, you know, transfer stuff to Austria to get them to help us out even more. North Borneo, uh, that's not particularly attractive. So I think we won't do that. And we have to make a decision whether or not we want to grab a state for 25 infamy. It's possible Great Britain abandons us if we grab a state. So maybe this is just a war reparations and something else. Um, but it's really tempting to try and grab a state in particular. Uh, Inner Mongolia would be nice to have, uh, that doesn't cost too, too much infamy, and the reason why is if we get Manchuria and Inner Mongolia, everything will be connected without needing to go for Shenjiang, uh, which is going to be a full cost, uh, province, and the problem we have with it being a full cost province, uh, is that it only has, like, two million pops, um, we could also just live Mongolia and go for them, oh, but they don't get Inner Mongolia, so maybe we ask for Inner Mongolia then. I think that I like this. Uh, we go for Inner Mongolia here, and then we go for War Reparations on Qing, and then we do... Uh, I don't think we take anything else, but we just take a little bit of a look. I think this will be fine. In theory, we would want to revoke claims at some point, but this will be pretty good. And this territory, it's on a resource basis, it's not too bad. They did also switch this up, so it is getting branches throughput. So we probably set this to auto-expand on the livestock with the hopes that that decreases uh, the rest of our market's desire to make the livestock. And then they have a nice smattering of resources. Um, they have some migration attraction, I guess. suppose that's okay. And 2 million pops isn't terrible, so we'll be getting in there. Wait, 2 million pops? Why did it only cost 7 infamy? What the hell? Wait. Why is that only 7 infamy? Is it unincorporated? It must be unincorporated. Yeah, it's unincorporated, so we get a little bit of a discount. That's why. Okay, that makes sense. So this is our setup at the start of the war. We got some defensive squads over here. We kind of already showed this off. This is probably where we're primarily going to push from. We're going to try and also get in on a landing. We might just be pushing from the start, to be honest, because it looks like they don't have too much resistance. So we'll put the one offensive guy on advanced front. We have the, you know, uh, the target here in the HQ. And also regarding tech, decided to go for dynamite here. I uh, thought that that would be pretty strong. We have mostly mines and we just uh, conquered the Southern Africa provinces. So the resource discovery chance to uncover that gold is gonna be really useful. Followed by egalitarianism. We're not passing any laws right now. We haven't been passing laws for a while. To be fair, letting the Confucian scholars just be happy and giving us this minus radicals uh, seems like a fine enough strategy but this will give us a decent law to pass in the form of proportional taxation which will actually yield us more money at this point but often even if it doesn't yield more money especially if you're running out of labor it can be extremely strong we're not running out of labor but the reason why is it's generally going to raise your sol which is going to help both your birth rate um, and also your migration rate because it's targeting the upper strung upper rung strata instead of the lower rung strata so often with graduated tax taxation, which we can't get onto yet. Um, it will make less money than proportional taxation, but it's still the preferred method because very often by the time you're going on to graduated taxation, you've run out of labor, or at least this has been the pre 1.6 conditions. 1.6 migration might change things up a little bit. We still have a really small sample size on it, but this is going to be the war for us. Um, you know, Great Britain is actually contributing, you know, a pretty hefty stack over here, which is distracting their 120 stack. They have a one, uh, they have a 21 stack on defense here. And so what I think we could do is I think we will probably be able to actually just merge these fronts if we want uh, by doing a little bit of a cheeky landing right here in Shenjiang. Uh, we have all these guys on defense, which is perfect because we want to be able to just reland immediately. Uh, but we're just going to try and land to unify these fronts. And we will also be pushing over here. And so it looks like we can 
can push in just fine here. And so we're going to be getting some pretty good war goals. And we also added transfer Langfang, a little bit of cheeky one at the end. Normally you want them to have Langfang and you go for Borneo because this gives you a trade adjacency. But we already have a trade adjacency with Ching, so we're not too worried about it. So we'll just, uh, you know, swap up these PMs, which is going to be great for us. Uh, we will... Uh, yeah, it should be good. We're just going to swap up even if it says it's not good because it just the tooltip often lies. I don't know the I don't know the price it gives, but I just know the sound it makes when it lies. Again, starting to add some more of the smattering of the stuff that we don't have a lot of. We're going to need to find some spots for textile mills. The reason being is that uh, we really, really, really uh, need to have more of this stuff for when we leave the UK's market. So that was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, which means we probably should have decked on them at some point earlier. Although, to be fair, um, UK was a large driver of us being able to be successful, but we'll just take a little bit of a peace deal, which is going to be super nice for us. We're still infamous, so we're still in relatively chill mode, but we do see the Korea expand, and we will eventually want to subjugate Manchuria. Uh, we've already subjugated Kamchatka, which is going to be good for us. They will accept a reduction in infamy. I think we're going to do this just because we want to incorporate them a little bit faster. This will also make it so that we have a front uh, with Russia uh, if we fight them, which is not necessarily necessarily a good thing it's not necessarily a bad thing well it's bad if we're weaker and it's good if we're stronger uh, and right now we're weaker so that will not be a good thing but look at this money look at how much money we're getting uh, and this is with a very large investment pool that we can drain out so it's time to add more construction everyone's favorite thing you get some construction, you get some construction, everybody gets construction. We're really just going to max it out here. Now, it's not going to be the absolute best here. We're also going to add that there. It's not going to be the absolute best here in terms of mapping necessarily, but we're adding it. A big part of why we're adding it here is because of the unemployment rate. And unemployment's really bad. Your pops grow a lot less when they're unemployed, and so we're going to be trying to get rid of them, which is also why uh, we decided that for the textile mills, we're going to put auto-expanding textile mills in these places and add a few uh, in regards to solving, uh, you know, some of the textile issues uh specifically uh just look to put them in here mainly just because we want to add jobs here uh, more than anything else so we've gone for a yo-yo sway on amazonia uh we're first siding with the revolt that way we can just kind of come back to the other side sometimes the tooltip lies and ask them to become our protectorate which will allow us to get them for freezies good dealsies we won't even have to do anything but i think we'll just send in mm, some construction really the the feeling when there's construction going on when you're trying to get your construction on but we'll just send a little bit of an army and uh put down that rebellion for them so we decided to help siam out against uh scandinavia because kind of no sweat off our back uh because it's not very important that we uh, we don't really have much infamy or we yeah we have a ton of infamy rather so it's not very important to us that we are like war all the time and something that's proactive and useful and so um we are going to be seeing if we actually get to defend here with guys we have stationed in their hq now these guys will be useful even if they land in we should just be able to push on both sides of a front that will allow us to pass a useful law uh up here we do want to get oh we don't have hmm we can't pass the, the child labor laws if the children... Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, it will help the uh, trade unions to become demarginalized, but they're probably, like, way too marginalized anyways. But we will instead be able to swap over to pharmaceuticals into Quinine, uh, which will be useful for, enough for us. Um, again, we're going to have some trouble because we're one of the downsides of the Confucian Scholars is they don't natively support... Um, you know, uh, public health insurance. So we need to get the trade unions up in order to get these guys going, or we need to research the tech that kind of uh, gives them, uh, makes it so that they care. And so this is the corporatism tech is likely going to be one we uh, kind of push for in order to get that on our religious folks. So um, I guess we will maybe do quinine into corporatism. Uh, and be pushing a little ahead of time, we can start pushing ahead of time a little bit aggressively. And so even if there's one or two techs left on research, we'll be fine with it. We'll just eat the higher innovation cost because we can afford it because we are we, ha we just have more money. So um, this is going to be fine for us and we are gonna be adding more and more construction continually. <laughs> and this one's of course nice. I don't think we're gonna pay for a new institution. Uh, a new level of institution. I think we're... Ooh, actually, you know what? We could just pay for another one in education. 
Didn't even realize. So we'll be adding that to the queue in order to be able to afford the next level of education as well. So after the naval battles concluded, it does appear that yes, you do get to borrow and uh, to help defend against naval landings using your guys, which makes it spectacularly way, way, way more easier to defend um, someone whom you side with, which this is going to be, this is an important change uh, in 1.6 that we're seeing, and so we will be able to defend these, which basically makes it so we can defend, you know, this kind of Southeast Asia contingent very, very easily against everyone except for Qing, except we can kind of fight Qing at this point. Uh, you know, Qing is obviously significantly weakened by the fact that we've been, you know, taking little snacking bites out of them. Oh no, we're being navally invaded. Who by? Oh. We're invading ourselves. The truth hurts. We're invading by ourselves. Another thing we're doing is we are improving relations with all these Southeast Asian countries uh, with the idea of pulling them into our market at some point. Not because they're necessarily the best, although their uh, production of opium is very valuable to us um, because we don't have any opium ourselves. Uh, but because this will be a little bit more themey, if we can get this massive, you know, kind of Asian-oriented uh, Korea, when we get released, in addition to some of the new world, which is really valuable, this will be cool. We're also bankrolling. We're also improving relations with Japan as well, for the same reason, hoping to, you know, make something happen. And we're also bankrolling Amazonia with the idea that this bankroll is very cheap. And we kind of hope that they just build uh, rubber and logging camps with the money that we're giving them. Um, this is the main reason we subjugated them, or swayed in to subjugate them, or release them from Brazil initially, because we figured we'd be able to subjugate them super easy. Um, we got it for free, and, uh, you know, in all these places they have over 20 rubber and a ton of logging, and some of them as well. I think that, uh, is it this province? Also has, uh, you know, the iron mine throughput bonus, so they're going to be really valuable when we annex them, and they don't have a lot of pop, uh, which is, means that it'll be a very, very cheap annex in terms of, you know, infamy. Uh, relative to the amount of resources. One of the better releases, I think, that you could do with Brazil. Uh, but, um, yeah. Uh, also, when we get free, Mexico will probably be on the table as well. So we're improving relations with them, or we have, like, max relations with them anyways. And something that will likely happen is the USA will declare war for Arizona and Mexican Texas. One of the reasons we didn't defend regular Texas against the USA was because we thought that if USA dows uh, Mexico, Mexico will probably do return Texas as their primary war goal. And so this will be a fine thing. And so it's almost better that the USA holds Texas, even if we want to eventually uh, claim Texas for ourselves. Kind of in a little bit of a chill mode here. Uh, we just reduced autonomy on Persia uh, and we are planning on it going after Manchuria at some point in the near future, and they are a pretty penny in terms of making them a protectorate. It's going to be 18 infamy, and so we want to let the infamy tick down for a little bit so we can go after Manchuria in a kind of a good order. Uh, we are also finally going after Parliamentary Republic again. Uh, the rev size is not very large. I think the, after after the revs deleting a ton of construction centers and bureaucracy happened before, I really don't think we want to run into them just deleting a ton of our universities' construction centers. Like, there's, we have a lot of universities, government administrations and stuff in these Chinese provinces, and so I don't think we want to let the, uh, the the war pop off. And so because of this, um, I think we'll give this guy, yeah, withdrawn from public. Um, but I think that we want to... Uh, make it so we want to avoid a rev just because of the building deleting in particular and so uh, That's why we've waited for so long for going parliamentary republic, but replacing this guy Psychologically afflicted, you know traditionalist commander experienced a colonial administrator. I guess that one's fine, but like Overall the tax waste is like a really negative modifier We really don't like it and so we are trying to get rid of this guy the air to be fine to be fair We could just step down to the air and the air would be a little bit of an improvement So we could abdicate but I think we're just going to wait and um, look to do it through uh, Normal means of just passing the laws and so this will be pretty good for us once we get it through and maybe Maybe it's a nice and themey uh, that once we get, you know, a parliament where, like, we want to be our own Korean people, not the British Korean people, and so we go for them. We also kind of hate how low-key uh, they're siphoning off Han Pops, uh, and so this is, uh, this is not, <laughs> like, this is not what we're about, like, a quarter of a million. Yeah, if we, can we just take a look at Han? Uh, get a little idea where all the Han Pops are. Oh, I guess it only shows for in Korea, not globally. All right, let's see, globally. We'll show globally where they are at. Yeah. There's, yeah, so the British siphoning off, like, a million Pops. 
that would otherwise probably uh, get dumped into, uh, you know, our country is a bit of a vibe, so we don't want that to be happening, so this is another reason to leave. So I'm not even sure exactly what happened, but these guys went from, you know, just having like 60 support uh, for this uh, to having like 200, the radicalism went to 272 out of nowhere from like 67, so I don't know what that's about. Oh, it's because there's an agitator. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, there's not a lot we could do about that, other than... Yeah, we can't slot these guys into government, unfortunately. Oh, Jesus, it's so... No, is it because there's... No, the agitator is just agitating for something else. Why is that? A little confusing here, but we're just going to come down off of it. Uh, it's kind of... I mean, it's super frustrating, to be honest. And the group that, like, we... W <sighs> okay. Well, I, th I mean, I think we have to come off it because we don't want the rev to pop. Um, even if we, even if this rev is winnable, we don't want it to delete a whole bunch of our buildings. I mean, well, maybe we're just supposed to, like... We have an obligation from the UK now. Maybe we're just supposed to tear the band-aid off and we're just, like, never getting past it without doing this. Uh, it is a bit unfortunate <clears throat> if we have to do this. That'll kind of suck. I mean, we could... It's also a chance uh, on each of these. <sighs> on each of these provinces is not a guaranteed uh but i mean it's guaranteed this rev pops that's a that's a bit unfortunate i don't know also uh unfortunate is the fact that most of our army is actually occupied in these two uh so i actually don't know if we could win against this rev actually i don't think we win without the uk's help we have an obligation with the uk but it's not guaranteed that we can use that obligation to get them to help i think it's very likely but we wouldn't want the run to die because of it I mean, I suppose worst case scenario, we could just flip sides, use it as an infamy reset, and call it a day. Yeah, I mean, okay, fair enough. Alright, well, we have become officially Korea. Uh, we're still putting down this rebellion, uh, or, the, yeah, the revolution. Uh, hopefully it's not done too much damage, but I think the damage is probably pretty extensive, too. You can see that they've deleted uh, government administrations and then rebuilt them. Which is tragic. They've deleted all the construction sectors. Also tragic. Um, but I guess it's not too, too cataclysmic. Also, all of our, like, armies are messed up. Uh, but we do get to pass the law we want. And, of course, what we were wanting to do all of this for was getting off of a guy who has expensive tastes. Oh. Okay. Well, you know. That's cool, too. Alright, it's time to rebuild, and by rebuild, I mean build the building things so that we can rebuild. Um, just a bunch of construction sectors. We're putting another 20 in in these places. We're waiting for our infamy to decay down just a little bit before we go for Manchuria. Also, it'll let, give some time for these armies to kind of uh, recruit up a little bit. Uh, I guess they recruited up a whole bunch of infantry. This is not the amount of infantry we had. We certainly didn't have a cavalry army. So actually, this means that we will have to reorganize the armies a little bit. So it looks like we'll probably have to dump, uh, you know, off into this one. Because I think this was just a 50 stack. Uh, but they didn't delete as many, um... After some reflection, they didn't delete as many of these as we thought, so that's not too bad. Uh, but they did delete a ton of universities, like a ton, a ton of universities. We had 31 in here, and so we're going to have to rebuild all those. And then in here, we were starting to build up to 31, um, so I think we're just going to put that in the queue uh, to get to the EOS and, uh, you know, a little bit of pain. Uh, but the pain will go away as, uh, you know, the place heals, as the land heals. The pain will go away. I think we're going to conclude the episode here. The nation is mostly healed. We built back pretty much, well, not quite all of our construction sectors, but a big chunk of our construction sectors. Now we just need to, you know, build back the bureaucracy. Uh, after thinking about it a little bit, I realized that actually, yeah, they did delete down uh, quite a few uh, government administrations, which was unfortunate. And so we'll need to get those back operational in order to be, you know, back to full strength. But now we are Korea. We have transformed ourselves. And that's I guess the primary thing that we did this episode, other than prepping to leave the market, which, um, you know, we're going to be in good shape to be doing moving forward. It's unfortunate our research speed is slowed down, but I think that um, we're going to go steel frame buildings because it's just such a strong tech. And um, this is going to allow us to kind of help build tall because I 
we really don't want to spread it around too too much um the construction to like inferior places and then after that i was thinking ironclads and gantry cranes would be pretty nice specifically gantry cranes is going to allow us to you know push the ports a little bit more uh in case uh things get a little bit sticky and so if we're partially researching ironclads we leave the market um just to, like if things start going poorly we can kind of have the oh no that within three years we're going to be getting onto gantry cranes or something like this and that this will help us uh to be able to handle that anyways i hope you enjoyed this episode if you did please feel free to like comment subscribe do the youtube algorithm thing and have a good day